Welcome back to the next episode in the Castlevania tutorial. Today we're going to work on this camera movement that you see on the screen now, where you go through a door, the camera scrolls to the side and then scrolls again and then continues to follow the player once we're in the next room. So hopefully that's what we're going to get added in in this tutorial. So stick around and we'll see what we can do. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Welcome back. Before we get into the video, just a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters James Welch, Basic Terror, Cole, Tomorrow Alexic Xan, Retro Galaxy, Clone 13, Foozle CC, Jet Simon, Olivier Bernier, Fan Van, Alex Fedorov, Arto Wajaz, and Amari Lewis. Thanks very much, guys, for supporting my game dev journey. And if you want to be part of the Patreon family, you can check out all the benefits that you get, including free pixel art, free music, free tile sets, and game packs on a monthly basis. There is a link in the description if you want to check that out. Um, I want to fix a couple of things with the player. At the moment, we've got him walking left and right, crouching, jumping, jumping forwards, attacking with the up arrow. But one thing is not quite the way I want it to be. If we attack, uh, it's fine by pushing the up arrow. But if we're walking and we try and attack, then nothing happens. We have to stop before the attack will register. And then likewise, if we start to attack but then walk, the attack doesn't fire. So we need the attack to be the predominant command. So whether we're walking, if so, as soon as we hit attack, I want everything else to stop and then attack because otherwise it's going to get frustrating. We're trying to kill things and because of the movement controls, it's going to stop us from doing that. The player is going to die, get frustrated and then never play our game again. So we need to add a couple of, uh, we need to add one boolean to the player really. At the moment, we've got a global variable at the top, which, which is the state of the player. But I'm going to add a Boolean variable to the player uh, sprite itself. And you can do that by clicking the sprite. Click on instance variables, add a new instance variable. And this one is just going to be called attacking. And it's going to be a simple yes or no Boolean. It's going to be defaulted to not ticked because we're not going to be attacking when we start the game. Now we need to come down to our code here and we need to say when we press the up arrow, when we set the state to whip, we can also now go on the player and you can see this instance variable section. We can set the boolean attacking and it's the only one we have. We can set it to true on there. And then when the whip animation finishes, we simply just set it back to false. Now we need to come up here. And where it says, if A is down, push C on the keyboard to get a condition. We're going to go to the player because that's where the Boolean variable is. We're going to say, is Boolean variable attacking? And then we're going to say, push I on the keyboard. And it's going to invert it to say that it's not true. So if we're pushing A and we're not attacking, then we can move. Therefore, when we push up arrow and attack, it's going to disable our movement control. Now we can just hold down control, drag down attacking under D. I'm going to drag it down under W and I'm going to drag it down under S because I want attacking to be the most predominant move that we can do. So I don't want to be able to move the player if we're attacking in any capacity. So now if I'm walking and I hit the attack button. Now, no matter what we're doing, whether we're crouching or jumping, He's still going to throw the whip out there. Okay, now we need to create a second room. So if I zoom right out on my uh, layout here, you can see it's pretty wide. This isn't going to be one whole room. We're going to divide this up and we can just use the ground here. So if we go over into the objects folder on the right, we can just drag out another copy of ground. You can stick it all on the same layer for now. And again, we will play around with these layers and make sure everything's in the right place at a later date. So let's go here we'll drag that up we're going to need to put a door here that's going to be a separate sprite and remember these are 16 by 16 so if we double click and we add a sprite click anywhere you like change the size the width is going to be 16 and the height's going to be 32 because it's two blocks high and now all we need to do is create a door but before we do that just change the origin point click on the little origin point icon there right click quick assign top left Go back to the pen uh, or, or the paint bucket tool. I'm not too fussed about the colors right now. I'm just going to color it that kind of dirty orange color. And I'm going to give it a white border. Just like that. 
Uh, let's make it so it animates very crudely again. We can tidy all of this up later, but let's duplicate the frame. Click on the animation, select the speed to zero on frame one. I'm simply just going to select a section of that, drag it in, select a section of that, and drag it in, and probably just a bit more, just so it's even on both sides. And again, one more, just to give it the impression that the door is open. So from there to there, and I will take that color, make it slightly darker, draw the edge of it down there, draw the edge of it down there, and there, and I think I'll just do half of it there on that side. Okay, make sure the animation speed is set to zero because we don't want it to play. It's just going to be a frame. It doesn't need to have any behaviors right now. We'll see how that goes uh, when we get to it. Um, the only thing is we're going to run into now is because everything's on the same layer, the player may actually go behind the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to right click, add layer to the top, and I'm going to call this the player layer. And the only things I want on this layer is the player and the player base. So select the player base, come over to the left where it says layer and just select player. Same thing with the actual character. I can pop that back on top now. Now the player is going to be on top of everything. See the camera went behind. So now he's gone through the door. He's not going to be able to jump and go through because that is still a solid wall. And the reason he can um, jump up with his head there is because remember the uh, c the base of the player is what is um, is controlling the movement. So because there's a space above it, he can technically jump. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> now we need to make sure the door opens when we collide with it. So let's go back to the events and let's see where should we put this code. Let's create another group here and call it doors. So just for the door code, we're going to put in an event in here. And we're going to say player and we're going to say is overlapping another object. And in fact, no, we're going to go with on collision, I think on collision. So the moment we collide with this sprite here, which we're going to need to rename, then we're just going to send that sprite to frame two or frame one because it starts at zero. Let's go back out, rename it to door. So now when we touch it, it goes through. Now, when we touch this, if you look, if, if we go back and look at the original game, as soon as it's touched, everything freezes and then the camera just tweens. So we need to disable some movement because we don't want the player to be able to move. As soon as we touch that, we want the player's movement to disable. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to put everything in a group so we can disable that group. So go ahead and add a group and we're going to call this uh, with a capital P player controls. I'm going to drag this one to the top and I'm going to drag all of this, everything, even the attacking into player controls. Now, when we hit the door, we can go back to the add action and we can go system and we can set group active and that group is going to be player controls and we're going to deactivate it and therefore when we touch this door for the first time our movement is going to be disabled so now we need to go back and we need to put some conditions on this camera because at the moment with the camera Uh, where did we put the camera movement? Here we go, every tick. So this actually doesn't need to be in the player controls. Let's create another group just for camera. Camera controls. Let's take this every tick, pop it down here. So at the moment, we've got every single frame of the game. We need that camera to stay above the player, which is fine. But when we get to this door, we need to disable that. So to create that camera effect, we need to create another sprite. Click anywhere. Size wise, uh, I'm leaving it at 250 by 250 and I'm going to color it bright red. And I'm going to make it 50% opacity and I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it cam underscore zone. And I'm going to put it there. 
In terms of the layer, it's going to be on the layer zero because everything is. And I'm going to right click, I'm going to go Z order, I'm going to center to the bottom of the layer so it's behind everything. Now it's very important that you keep the image point right bang in the center and make sure the image point is at the same height as the camera. So I'm going to knock it up one. So you can see the image point as you follow that line along is the same height as the camera. Now we're going to go back to the events under the camera controls and we're going to add a condition to every tick. So push C on the keyboard and we're going to say player and we're going to say is overlapping another object and we're going to go cam zone. And then I'm going to invert that. So I'm going to say every tick, if the player is not overlapping the cam zone, then we're going to just keep the player, uh, the camera above the player. But I'm going to change it slightly because at the moment it's just at a fixed position. I want to add a lerp expression, which is going to basically, it's going to make the camera movements uh, smoother. So if you go back, uh, we can actually just delete all of that in there. Just start typing in LEP which is LERP, then open brackets, and it's going to ask you for some data. So the first thing we need to put in is the camera's position, which is self.x, because remember, we're just working on the x axis. So wherever the camera currently is, comma, and then the position we want it to travel to, which is the player base, dot x, and then the kind of delay or the kind of the, the, the time it takes to get there. I'm going to say 0.05. Then if I start the camera over here, it takes a bit of time to get back there. So you can see already there's a slight delay on it. Okay, now we need to go back to the door and we need to say player on collision with door. And now we need to tell the camera to go over to the center of this red uh, sprite. So to do that, I'm going to need to add another behavior to the camera. And that one is going to be the tween behavior. So when we collide with the door, we're going to say camera and we're going to tween one property. That's going to be the X property. And the N value is going to be the cam zone dot X. And it's going to take one second to get there. When we get to the door, it takes us to the next room. In fact, that's probably a little bit too fast. So let's slow that down a tad. We're going to uh, slow it down to two. Um, now, when it reaches that X position, then we need to unfreeze the, the player. So what we can simply do is add an action underneath this player. Uh, sorry, underneath the camera here, which says system wait two seconds, which is the amount of time it's going to take for the camera to move. And then we can set the player controls active. So we go over the door, door opens, camera goes through and the player still can't move because Okay, so what I'm going to do on this door, I think it's because we're colliding with the door again when we when we go active. So I'm going to add it just to trigger one. So I'm going to push B on the keyboard. We're going to go system. We're going to go trigger once while true. And I'm going to copy all of that. And I'm going to drag it down underneath. So now it just says when we collide with the door, just do this once. So I can move. I just can't get through the door. And I don't know why that is. So the issue I think we're having is around this on collision with door trigger once setting the player group deactivated and reactivated two seconds later because we're currently because we're constantly overlapping it. When I move, I feel like we continue to collide with it and just continue to reactivate this block of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an action to the bottom here and I'm going to say system and our global variable. I'm going to set the state value to transition. And then I'm going to do that once when we collide with the door. And then over here on states in movement, I'm going to stay system compare state. If it equals transition, then we're going to do these things once. So we're going to create a subgroup, sorry, a sub event, which is trigger once. 
So on collision with door, well, we can set the frame to frame one. That's fine. That doesn't need to be triggered once on transition. That will just happen whenever we hit any door. And then trigger once, set the state to transition. If we're in transition, then trigger once, do this. And you can see it. The movement controls get deactivated, but my left and right doesn't. It's because the player set position on every tick is within this is overlapping cam zone. So we need another uh, group. So it's time to add my setup group. So things that happen at the beginning of the layout. I'm going to go ahead and add an event to that and say system every tick. I'm going to drag that one down separately. I can't believe I didn't see that. There we go. Now we can move again. Now we can move again. So now we can now we can get this code looking the way we want to. So I don't think I'm going to need that state transition anymore. So apologies for for that. So let's get rid of that. Let's get all of this back down here in the trigger once put the frame one in there we can get rid of that whole block there so now when we hit the door we're going to set it to frame one we're going to deactivate the controls we're going to wait two seconds for the camera to zoom uh, to tween over and then we're going to reactivate there we go and uh, now we're in can't believe that took me so long to figure that out must be having an off day um, and then when we come out of here it scoots over to us but it's a little bit delayed so let's go back to the lerp instead of 0 0.05 let's do it at 0 0.1 um, but in fact what I think we can do in fact to mitigate that is instead of having that origin point in the center if we double click on that sprite go to the origin point right click quick assign to the right and then we can just make it smaller And then that should work because then as soon as we clock, as soon as we get off the right hand side of this edge, it's going to immediately be on top of us. There it goes, tweens us over and we're back in the room and all is well again. If we go back the other way, there is a problem. But that is a problem that we are going to fix in the next episode. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, this tutorial series will be me putting this game together without prior knowledge of doing it before. So there will be some instances where I have to figure some things out as we go along. So please bear with me. I suppose it's good to kind of see the trials and errors that I go through when I make the games anyway. Uh, but we can fix that um, in the next episode. That won't be a problem. Um, thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. And I'll see you in the next episode.